Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today we have an exciting lineup of topics related to Spring Framework that you won't want to miss. We will dive into Spring DevTool, Live Steroid, Spring Bean and Dependency Injection, Type of Dependency, followed by Application Property and YAML. Under YAML, we will also understand each configuration profile, how to be configured and the property, how we write properties for the application property. Let's get started. Namaste. Welcome to Bit Science. All of the secrets of life and technology with our comprehensive biology and Cambridge Science Education. Bring DevTools features. So when we talk about DevTools, so DevTool it's not present in the spring. Whenever you create a simple spring application, it is not part of the spring. This is the add-on feature means this is a dependency or you need to add this add-on thing into your spring project without that you cannot uh, get these features so what are these features spring boot dev tool provides the following features property defaults when we talk about defaults like uh, v properties we always think about the template what is templating templating is a technology where find some data let's say you have a variable a okay and you want to show that in your browser how you're going to tell that browser this is my variable have this value use this value and make it use of it time leave will help you to bind that data and from estimate page you can display the value so this is one of the feature of dev tool the next feature we have automatic restart so restart you know it automatic happens so dev tools main use is automatic restart we if you want to restart your application means whenever you change some code there can be one case that a developer has changed few line of code and at the same time he wants to deploy build your application so in that entire process you, you why how we used to do is we build that process we do maven clean maven install and we build that application at then you it build then we have to run also so entire process takes time. If you add this dev tool, you don't need to do all those steps. This dev tool will automatically restart your application whenever there is a code change. So what happens in, uh, internally is whenever there is a Java class changed, then this automatic restart will trigger. It will just restart everything. It will try to build and it will deploy or it will run your application. So this is the feature of DevTool. The last one is Live Reload. So after uh, restart of your application, you might be thinking that if we have restart, why not I can uh, refresh my browser? It should also do. This is one of the add-on feature. You get Live Reload means whenever there is a change in your application, it will automatically auto refresh your browser. So this is what happens with this uh, Live Reload. So we'll see that in our code. So how we we are going to create a Spring Boot application with add-on with DevTool. So these are some following steps we have to follow. First, we will going to create a Maven project. We can use Spring Initializer. So we'll then we'll add the two dependency. One is Spring Boot Starter Web, and another is DevTool. So starter web is will help us to write time leaf and dev tool will help us to do the live reload and auto restart. At the end we will generate the jar and we will get that exported and imported to our ID tool. And last we will build our application and we'll run the Java application. Okay. Let's see in an example. Okay. So in order to do you must visit this link which will help you to create a project so create a project i'm selecting maven and language java you can select any of the following okay so in this group you write anything so i'm writing session two or this is session six But take any 
uh, the version which has the lower means whatever version you choose it should be lower of your current java version if you have 17 installed then take 11 or 17 or 8 any of that not 19 okay so i will take 8 at the right side you will see the dependency search for dev tool here you will see spring boot dev tool click that and it will add to your pom file another we required is web spring web okay click this this will this is uh, starter web so if you see if you explore this you will see what are the property we have defined that is so you can see this java version is still 17 we need to change it when we export right and yeah so what we are trying to verify is see if starter web is there and dev tool is there these two uh, will help us to do a task so download this let me download and put it in my eclipse project now go, come back to your eclipse id go to file do open from files search for that directory i have in spring if you select you will see the, the if that is a maven project i will show you then say finish so it will take some time to update your maven project and also configuring so you will see the structure is different now it will change so in that in this moment you need have internet connection to update your whole structure you can see the change has been completed so yeah so let's see what we have we have this uh, package under that we have the tool application running one more thing is this resource file this was not present when we created without dev tool you will see the difference when when you don't add dev tool dependency also i want would like to show you the pom file how it looks so where whatever you add dependency that comes under dependencies tag so each dependency will have one one dependency so this is the way if you if you want to delete delete only this one like each dependency if you save it will automatically build your application so this resource has extra folder this is automatically generated when you have this starter web added what it means is we have whenever you want to write some ui or front end coding you can put everything in the static for images and or, or any fab icon if you know fab icon you can put inside this so everything other than or uh, on your ui code can be present in template so template will have th those html file or javascript or css everything will be under this template it is not certain that it has to be inside this template it can be any other or you can create a custom also that is a separate discussion so for now that by default it is under template so you can see this application property so application properties in where we are going to write our application environment everything inside this if you want to have some constant static things here you can put it here we will see in the coming topics now we'll run this and build this application right click on this project and see run as you can do build for one go right in the goal clean install you can also specify what is your application name you can also specify so apply this run this it will start building okay i remember we have to change the version 1.8 i'm going to change and it will start rebuilding one more thing is we have to change this version as well and before that i have to update it so go maven and do update project so click the which which you want to update you can see in the top it's downloading it will also download the right uh, dependency 
So you can see this Maven build, we have a shortcut. We I always use this Alt plus Shift plus X. So what will it will show? Put press this three button at the same time. You will see some option here. Now after that I want to build. So this if you just press M, it will just run your whole Maven build. So this is the shortest way to build your application. So if you see this spring, that means your application is almost ready. Then after you your if you have some test that will run. So I have one test that it has run and it doesn't have any error. So this works perfect. So you can see this Maven that earlier it was there was a change. Right, we have changed the parent. So always remember what version you are working. So take the latest latest one if you have the latest Java version or it works on that. Okay. So now my application is built. Now come back to your run application. So how to run? You there are two ways. Either you can say run as click on project and run as a Java application. This will also do, but it will also ask to show you dialog box where it will ask what is your main class. I have a main class. You can see dev tool application. Find that main class and click enter it will start your application okay now you can see my application has been started how to identify you can see start development this start your application and within the seconds few feature you can see this dev property default so my default property has been set dev tool this line was not there when when we have not added whenever you add this dev tool dependency you will see this line of code the default is active property is one of the property which is set we can set also okay this is true right now this is for changing your property as well so we can also uh, define where my property file is okay that is with the dev tool itself as you can see in this uh, this whole console there are few things to be noticed first these things okay we can also see live reload server is running so this is the port where your application is running so there are two ports you can you can see one is this tomcat so the first server which is running your application is on this okay and the live real there there is another server which is helping this main server to run it's is uh, on the another port okay and also you can see in the top this has some red marks that means that this application is actually running running means it is live so whatever you do change that will automatically change so let's let's do something so i am writing some logger okay logger how to write logger let me try this logger this logger factory is actually from sl4j so uh, this is actually integrated with the spring itself so you can use this sl4j which will which will help you to write your logs so here you need to add your class which class this log belongs to this will okay, there are two import it has already taken so it has to be only one which is sl4j logger okay yeah and the logger factory the, there is another which was added which was with the util don't take that use this log now use this log and say info info for information there are multiple type info warning error you can use any of according to your use so here i am going to write any statement okay i'm just writing information logging so whenever i say save right you can see in the console it is starting my application so there was some error so that moment i saved so what happens here it started executing and it throw error so i have some error that moment so now i have resolved so when when i saved with without error build my application and you can see my application is also running and you can see the last statement was condition evolved and this is my log you can see in the log up to this one 
is part of the log generation. This log SN4G will help you to do, do this. And then we have this information. So just after the colon, we will see the information you have put that will be appeared. Okay. If you don't want to uh, see this information, any of the date type, time date, or any of the where it is belong, you can always change uh, by adding the pattern. So that we can do with in the application property. You can clear this whole console. So this will clear your console. So let's see that what we have changed over the thing. We added a dev tool. If this dev tool is not there, okay, what will happen? This will, if you don't include this, let's say I deleted this one. So first of all, I need to stop this because now I don't have dev tool anymore. Okay, now I'm rebuilding my application. I don't need to rebuild. I just need to rerun this time. If you rerun, you will see information logging is is there. Okay, but if, if I change something now, you can see if I change and saved. So let's say I'm writing another log and saved. So now you can see there's no effect, but my server, the this application is still running my application running but and when whatever I have made change or a simple code change it has not built my application because of uh, I have removed this dev tool this dev tool I have removed so this helps this tells me that automatic restart happens when we add this dependency okay so stopping this server and adding this dev tool now come back to this topic spring beans and dependency injection so spring beans is an object simple if you say it's a backbone of your application so when whenever we we create a bean it means that it's a java app java class and spring ioc container is going to manage those class it is not now managed by your java now it is managed by your spring so when we say spring beans down, that means you have given the full control, how the beans has to be created or how beans will be created. That is depends upon how your logic have you have built. When, when we say spring beans, so there is called spring IOC container. What is IOC container? IOC fill form is inversion of control. It is simply a process. Whenever you create a bean, this inversion of control will help you to control your bean that how it has to be created. So inversion of control is basically used to invert different kinds of additional responsibility of class rather than main responsibility. That, that means that think about a pizza delivery. You order something. You order pizza through your app, right? You tell that I want this pizza, this kind of pizza to be on my plate. You don't want to understand how it has to be created, who is going to create and who is going to deliver, right? So this whole process is about inversion of control. You just put your order, one function will be sent to that store which you have ordered. It will send that information to the store. Please cook one pizza and that pizza should have this information means it will have that toppings, it will have those uh, pepperonis, these if you have added non-veg or you have want to only have veg and you have provided that will be your whole pizza. And then and this information will be given to whom? It will go to chef. Chef will bake your pizza and sometime it will cook your pizza and it will send to the delivery boy. So there is another formation which deliverer has to pick. So it can be anyone who is nearby delivery person will go and fetch that information he doesn't know how it has been cooked he just has to deliver so he will just go and receive that package whatever the store has given to him and he will come back to your home doorstep and you will get the pizza it will be delivered to you so this whole information the pack and everything how bring is helping you is it is encapsulating every uh, data and it's only giving you main information which 
it is required to you not everything so this is the idea of inversion of control hope you understood the example and then we have dependency injection dependency injection is a ability of object to supply dependency to of another object uh, in this pizza delivery scenario your pizza and the store and the de delivery is all dependent on, on your customer order if there is no order then that delivery or the store and any the chef even or the pizza will never exist this is what means dependency injection hope i made you clear so this whole scenario we will try to create some example and we'll see how in spring we can use it okay now let's uh, take an example simple example if you're following or not uh, football fifa cup is going on right so let's let's say there is a team okay so for that team i will create create a class called team okay so team will have what are the information it will have name team name right and then will it will have players as well right it can be any player so then i need a number of players as well so i will say integer number of players a team will have there will be many other information it will have jersey where the team is right which country there are many other info so let's take with simple example now i want to create a constructor so this is way to create so this in constructor will have name string name and integer number so i hope you know how to create in constructor or how the uses of constructor we will use this keyword to tell whenever i want to create with the team i should map this value okay now i'm going to map whatever i'm going to send this value it will send to this attach to this two value so this name will attach to this this means this one okay next we have this called number of players equals to number of player so this is done so this has been created now we might require some if you can see in this example we have a private uh, access this way we have this private this is public that means that we can create this this uh, object or the uh, by with the help of constructor but we cannot access this two value we only can set this value but if you want to retrieve that value you cannot directly uh, say team what is the object you have created dot name you cannot do that way okay in order to we need some uh, another method to get that value or set that value so we can write get a setter we say it so for each value we have to write get a setter things so getter of each so getter will have i want to get what name i want to get this is one method which will help me to get a value what value so if get name is called then return this dot name okay so i will mark this as public so that everybody can access instead of doing dot name the developer has to use this get name okay same applies to get number of players also method return this dot number of players okay this is getter and also we need to setter setter set of so what i want to set see one way we can set is with this if you just spend add this into this this is only way to set value okay so for for your information to set this is the way to do it set a name uh, what you want to set i want to set string value of name and whatever you have written this 
this one for each it will do okay so whenever you want to set or particular variable then we will use the set name or if you want if you always want to do with the object you can always do this i can just say number of player also equals to and so whatever i have value i will put that here okay this also works this also works okay this is the it so next if you want to access this value you have to create an object so i i came to this main method under that main method i will create i'm going to use t as a object and saying t so this is the way to create an uh, team right let's say france is one of the team name means uh, the team name and the number of player so let's say this is 80 okay so this t will have two information france and this 80 this is the way to create an object right but this is not the way to create object by spring so spring will be different so how to create an object this is a we have to understand certain things to create an object so we don't create an object we don't tell that to create that we will just tell please use that way to create that object okay we have to write the way so in order to write that we have to so first we need to create a bean wherever you want to write a bean right bean has to be under this boot application or it has to be under configuration if you have configuration anywhere in your class it can be in this or it can be any of the package so you can create this bean okay so if you know spring boot is equivalent to configuration and other two or annotation so that's why i'm going to write a method bean is about method but it's also create help you to create those beans so i will say create team okay so create team annotation so i import by doing control shift o so it will automatically add this annotation now tell what you want to create so whatever you have written here okay this piece of information will help me to create that bean every time okay traditional way we have spring way this it returns a context so you can take a application context we have application context and use a object called context here the help of context you can create the bean team context dot get bean it it requires two parameter one is the name of the parameter it has to be under double quote okay and what you are fetching so this is about team team class okay team dot class i have to i want to fetch this one statement is actually equivalent to this this one and this one so whenever i want to create a bean so i don't need to do this way this context dot get bean is actually telling the spring container that please get a bean which will help me to do the creation of the this team class if i run this your application you will see one error you can see this uh, you have an exception and this you know, this has been thrown this means that the bean name create is expected to be type of something so do you get a null bean so why is that because you have you are going to create the bean but you have not told that team is a is a container you have to tell that this is not java class anymore this is a container in order to do that we have to add annotation called container and thing has to be modified with this one is we are creating a bean but we need to return as well so that we get that the team object so this earlier it was just a simple and plain method so what i have changed is i have um, added return type which will tell that which what object you want to get okay so this is the right example 
the to create a bean instead of doing new method okay we are using context bean method hope you understood this one okay let's let's build this application or i believe it's building you can see in like in this down creating teams right that means my application is running oh so this is the way this is example of bean creation okay next we have inversion of control so what is inversion of control if uh, so by theory we understood that's a process but uh, to add that in the process we have to create something else let's assume that there is another functionality means team each team will have number of players right e and each player have its own identity so i need another player as a class itself okay which will give me whole player data so this class i want have to had to be created so i will create i will write this private and this will be created over this one and it will help you to create your class it will also ask where which package you want to add i will just put that everything in under this it has to be under this you cannot uh, remove this or you cannot place anywhere then what will happen is spring will not identify your classes so just finish it and yeah come so you can see whenever there's a save happening it's changing your state so we can ignore for now i'm adding some few information like player name player uh, age okay this two information now i also have to create the setter getter the easiest way to create is go right click on your program go to source you can see this source under this section source and search generate setter getter so this will help you to create your so this eclipse will help you to create your setter getter so you can also insert what point so say last member whatever you have the last member means if you have name is the last number then it will eventually add after that now here we have age so after that i will be adding so you also can short by where you want first which which thing you want you want the getter first or setter first okay you can everything change the specify active everything you can change here as well so now i want public right now so generate so what what happened is so whatever i have to write manually this is generated automatically this reduces the boilerplate coding you don't need to write multiple time you just do the dialog box eclipse id so this player has been created and you can see player been added here this player is is totally dependent on this team right if team is been created then only player will be exist this is the inform of in dependency injection depend to add tell that uh, spring also that this is a dependency injection you have to add auto wire you have to to add annotation call auto wire to tell that this is a dependency this is dependent on this so this player is dependent so uh, you don't need to create create object of player you just need to create team player will be created automatically in spring example you don't need to tell that to create the b it will eventually create for you because i have added auto wire this auto wire will help you to create okay whenever i am creating a bean this p will be created automatically yeah but it will not have any object means any information in that that is true it it will be a plain object it will not have any information that is different discussion so let's see if i need to add some logger to help you understand logger log tree log here i'm going to add some information telling that team is created saying that this is name of name then you can also add for few more information like comma total players so this information will be created if you create a object we also can create a simple constructor to tell that this is a team which doesn't have any value this is saved now go to player 
now I have to add this component. Now this looks good. So you can also add specify this is component. Also add the same information what you have and also create this default constructor so that you get the same information. It has to be age, layers, layer, layer name. So now let's see in our console. So let's remove this example first. See the traditional approach below. Classes were successfully created. Players were added. You can observe the console output below. However, you will notice that it's creating the team and player names first. But I cannot see if there is player associated with that. We need to add more information such as player's name. The same applies to getting each player. Let's see if it works. Unfortunately, an error occurred. It says it couldn't invoke session.names of the player's name because it's null. This happened because we are trying to access the player before it's added to the set. To fix this, we need to rearrange the code so that player is added before it's accessed. Now, my team has been created, but I can't see any player cache. This is because it's waiting to be created, but we haven't called the class constructor. In this example, Bing doesn't automatically fire the constructor as it does in the traditional way. Let's add some logs using traditional approach to understand what's happening. Now we have a display method to get our data. When we call this method, we can see the object has been created and we cannot access the player's view. This whole example helps you understand Spring Beans and Dependency Injection. Hope you understand so far. So, the next part is Dependency Injection. There are various types of Dependency Injection. The three way we can do is, the first way we have already seen, that was Interface Injection. You can see Interface in Injection. How we did is, we add AutoWare on the interface. So, that was not interface, that was a class itself, but that is the way of uh, demands injection. So in this type of injection, the injector use interface to provide dependency in the client class. The client must implement an interface that will expose a setter method which accepts the dependency. The second way are the setter getter. So you now you know what is setter getter. So we also can add auto wear on the setter getter as well. In this type of injection, the injector method injects the dependency to the setter method exposed by the client. Uh, the last is constructor injection. In this type of injection, the injector supplies dependency through the client class constructor. So let's see how we can add that. It's very simple. Whatever we have added, so let's go to the team where we have this auto wire. However, this is not interface, this is a class. So you have to create a simple interface which will have matches. So this match will have rounds has to be final. You can say there are 30 rounds. It has to be tactic and final. Yeah, string I have made it, it has to be teacher. By default it will be final. So whatever you write that will be. So now if you want to inject, so the so team will have how many rounds you can add. So instead of writing here, you can inject auto wire, auto, auto wire and write private uh, matches, call the matches and say match. With the match, you can get this round value. You can also say match. Match is a method. Okay. Match can be and between two player, right? Can be player one or player two. I don't need to define anything as is an interface. Whoever calls it, he has to use it. So this is the example of interface autoware. Uh, this is the example of property. Also, we have some um, setter data. You can also tell this is autoware. So this one and uh, this one 
all belong to property dependency okay the last one is the constructor so if you want to say this as a auto wire okay then this will also be dependent on this so whenever you create it has to be this has to be created so you can see we have two name right you can also add qualifier and say this is team one this will resolve the ambiguity between two beams. I hope you understood the whole idea of different type of dependency injections. Let's move on. The last is uh, the application property. So, in application property, we we can specify whatever you want to configure your profile and property. Let's say you have a dev tool, right? So, you can control the involvement of dev tool in the property file, which means you don't need to delete this dependency so if you see in the form file you have this dependency you don't need to delete that in order to top this dev tool you can change this this you can see is optional is true and end time is true there are some certain property which comes with this dev tool that you can address i want to show you you can see whenever there's a spring restarts so this is the spring banner this is automatic generator you can also see the version as well if you want to remove this one, you can also do it with the Spring pro uh, application property. In order to do that, you have to add a banner. If you say it set off, you can see this banner. And when this is a off mode, now this banner will will never generate. So up to this was part of that. So you can see the banner is never generated. This was and just after that your application has been started you can see this right restarted due to while class path is, has been changed then see this is a simple example of application property one of the property can be take example you want to configure or you want to uh, integrate your database it can be any database it can be uh, mysql it can be postgres it can be uh, sql server uh, oracle any anything in order to do that, you have to configure with your project. So, you might have credential. That credential has to be somewhere it has to be put. This is the place where you put your credential. You have to add Spring Data Source. What data source you want to get. So, this is the default uh, database. We will have a complete session about this. How to, we, how to create this S2 database. Okay. So, for, for now understand this is a database called s2 database and we have user name called user and password and if you want to add some dialect how you want to connect that also you can add so if you write spring .data .url, you will have that connection here okay one interesting value let's say you want also can create some custom value also so i have app app dot I want to say app.name and I'm adding some value called uh, messy. Okay. This value has to, I want to get into my code. Okay. So whenever I'm creating a team and with the players called that one, we can add player name called messy. So I'm creating a player. I will not write the value messy here. I will get that value from the property and property file can be changed according to your requirement so what i will do is i will add a simple variable called uh, layer and i will get it from value as as a annotation and i will get it name equals to what value so this has to be the same one you need to bind it okay it has to be value not value now it's correct so with annotation called value you can access the property name this is my name so player will have this messy value now i need player thing and player will have uh, this 45 age 40 age create player is defined so saving it player has been created uh, now if i want to create a player or want to get a bean p so this is the way to do it now t2 dot let's set the player p okay 
now i have set i should be able to in the display also the player messi now it has appeared app name okay instead of that value you have to add curly braces and also say that this literal that i want to get the value if we just say that value as a value then it will whatever you place the value that will be put as a, a player if you want to find the environment of the property you have to tell by this way so what it means this becomes a variable and you are trying to find it in the property file if you now now if you save it i believe i should be able to get the messy value right messy you can get it right so this is the way to get the properties value as well so this is a custom property to be created let's see the example we are creating application dot server and if you want to add list of server so what it means that uh, under this first list zero uh, you have written ip so under same list you have another variable called path so under first list you will have ip and path and second list also we have ip path so likewise we have different so you also can define the list of the property like this by this syntax another example would be so you can see this example logging dot file name so whatever we have written log right you can place uh, you can tell which log where it has to be stored so this will store to my my application dot log file and we have a more example like def so this is the classic example of changing your profile assume that your project is working only for one environment there can be multiple environment one could be your developer environment another can be a prod environment there can be middle environment like pre prod uat sid if you heard about these jargons those we talk when your project is deployed in certain environment before going to lights it has to be tested by user so that is user uat user acceptance test then we before that also we have sit and before going live we also deploy pre prod so how we will maintain different different code in that point we cannot change our credential so if you have your application is running only for dev then you have to paste your different credential so in this example you can see that you can add multiple uh, profiling if you are working on dev you can say this is on dev profile and if you are working on prod this you can say prod profile and you can also segregate by by this this is comment as well as you tell this is um, profiling delimiter so you tell this is up to this profile and this is for production profile whatever is the at the end that will be eventually the one it will be activate on if you want to start if you want to activate something else then what you do is put this code at the down and tell that activate on profile this step so we have other way we also when we be talk about property file we have other yaml file if you have heard or not yaml file is also effective in terms of changing your properties in order to create he has to create like this say yaml if you have yaml if not then you can just create an application right click and say file and say application dot yaml yaml spelling is extension is y a m l so yaml file same whatever you have written in here you can also do it here as well how you can do it let's say spring main banner of you want to switch it off then you write like this you do with indentation syntax so this will disable the banner so the same line of code you do it you do it with this one this same example for this one if you want to do this spring what you do is to instead of dot you add indentation and next you always do in in the next line data source should be in the second and you cannot uh, yeah one more mistake here you cannot say equals it doesn't work it has to be like this okay call 
column you have to specify so same here's url this one now you can see spring data source there are multiple now you don't need to do multiple data source just add the ind right indentation and this will be understood by the yaml yaml is very effective when you do structuring of this list so whatever you have listed here this can be written like this one what i did is this uh, spring dot server the application dot server we have first list we have second list so each list can be identified by a hyphen here you can see this every list an order list is specified by hyphen and you in the hyphen whatever you write that will be part of that first list this second list this is third list so this way with structuring it will help us to understand what position it has same goes for this profiling as well you can do the same way by you can uh, differentiate by triple hyphen here okay so this is a delimiter you can see this profiling this is for staging and this can be this is active right now if you want different profiling then you can create different you have to uh, again create another one profile hope i made you clear this for yaml and property so always remember when you have a yaml property this both will not work in your project if you working with property use only with property but if you want to work with yaml delete this property file and work with yaml both will not work in the same project okay, why this there is an error here because uh, up up we have spring as well so yeah, i don't need double time to create i just need uh, to put this in one go so this helps to resolve everything uh, this yaml is very much helpful when you do dockering also have the same yaml script you write the script and you execute you put everything in the yaml file and that will execute so yaml is that efficient in that uh, when you do pipelining cdl sl in summary the choice between yaml and property file in spring boot often comes down to personal preference and complexity of your configuration yaml is generally preferred for its readability and support for more complex data structure while properties file remain a viable choice for similar configuration or when working in environment where property file are the convention this concludes the application property and yaml that's a wrap for today's video we have covered some essential spring topics from dev tool to dependency injection application property and profile configuration we hope you have found this information valuable for your spring project if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel for more insightful content thanks for joining us and we'll see you in the next video